If you are familiar with the expat community here in Zhongshan, then you know who Gordon Stiles is. He's the CEO and founder of Star Rapid Engineering, and that's here in the city of Zhongshan. It's actually not very far from my university. In fact, I believe he employs many of the graduates from my university in his factory. Today I've come to Star Rapid Factory. It's a famous place here in Zhongshan. And I'm here with uh, the CEO and owner. This is Gordon Stiles from the UK. Howdy. Uh, and he's agreed to kind of show me around the factory a little bit. I'm very excited for this. I've heard a lot of things about, a lot of great things about this place. Good. So how many total employees do you have? Uh, so we actually have a self-imposed cap of 250 people and I think we're about five under that at the moment. Wow, so you're almost fully staffed then, huh? Yeah, well, wow. we don't like to go above it. I, I, I'm happy at that. <laughs> okay, yeah. 250 problems is enough. I was going to say, that's a lot of egos <laughs> to solve, right? <laughs> okay, so let's go take a look around. Ruthie. Ruthie. Hey, buddy. Hey, yeah. puppy. Good lady. Yes. Come, Come here. Puppies. Come on. You can sit with me. It's okay. Come on. Yeah, Come on. I'm a nice guy. Come, Come say hi. This is Coco. She's so lovely. She's only three or four months. I have five months old. Oh, she's adorable. Yeah, when she was born. Are these all your pups or they belong to everybody? They're all factory, yeah. Huh? yeah. I love that you have a dog friendly area. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they've got their own house as well here. So the employees can bring their dogs to work? Uh, yes. Yeah? As long as they're nice. Oh, I love that factory smell. Yeah. Mm. The smell of the so this is our CNC shop. So these are basically like moldings and stuff? So these are CNC mold parts. So uh -huh. These are made out of solid metal. Mm -hmm. These cutters spinning around like this, and they cut metal off a solid block. What's what's actually cutting it? Uh, the, the, the tungsten carbide cutter. Okay. It's very very hard, and it slices, you know, the uh, aluminium or metal or whatever it is off. And what you're left with is a machine component. 32 at a time, but six every time the door opens, 16 parts come off. Fitted. So that's straight off the machine. No deburring, nothing. It's completely fitted. It can go straight to the client. And he was telling me that, you know, to film it, you mount a GoPro here. And then this is an air blaster that keeps the coolant off of the camera so you can see it in action. Very, very cool. All right. But this is a bigger one. That's a five inch. Yeah. So he's working on. Just some uh, titanium. Titanium. Ah, so this is titanium. Titanium. Jeez. So you can cut titanium and oh, yeah. mold it and shape it. Actually, not that difficult. Uh, like I say, that, that one's titanium there. Mm. And it, you can tell it from that kind of grayish, yellowish kind of... Yeah, it's like a brushed kind of look to it, yeah. huh? Lots of different bays. So each engineer has their own bay, huh? Yeah, so it's called one man, one mold. So they find the mold, program it, make it, assemble it, trial it, all the way through beginning to end all in one go. Wow, okay, so they're almost like little project managers for each yep. each each order or each client has their uh, own each individual mold tool. Okay. Yep. Very cool. Paint shop through the back there. Oh these, yeah, I can smell it. <laughs> these are, yeah you can smell it. <laughs> these are the biggest injection moldings we do. And this is a, a plastic? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah like about three or four kilos each, which mm. is an insane weight. <laughs> but they're thick. They're thick. Yeah. 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 So what he's doing here is he's getting ready to. So the pa the painting is through the back there. Okay. We, we don't let anybody in there because it's, it's, you have to get suited and booted. Uh, but what he's doing here is he's, he's setting up to do some uh, silk screen printing. Yo, me o, eating. Ah. 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 Okay, so it's just a little, little tiny print job. That's all it is, yeah. and then he's covered it up again with some plastic. We actually, ironically, use a car painting system here. Really? Yeah, we use um, PPG. It's all the same polyurethane paint you find on a car, because it's very uh, robust. You know, you see some of the parts. 
that's quite a big part of the stuff there. Mm. Mold polishing. So everything is polished by hand? <laughs> yes. Well, they have ultrasonic tools. That's, that's, that's an ultrasonic tool she's got there. Mm -hmm. We've got nine injection molding machines, seven down here, two small ones upstairs. Uh -huh. Hello. Uh, this tool's going to open in a sec and the part's going to come out. And these are just plastic <laughs> injections, huh? Yep. They look like little like boots of some kind. Yeah, they are. These are yeah. rubber. There you go. That's a three plate mold. So the parts come off there, but the um, uh, risers come off uh, the... Um... So are these the mixers? Uh, these are dryers. The dryers. We have a lot of drying. So where do you actually mix it? Is it, is it in the machine itself then? You put, you put your resin in the top here. It goes down into here. And there's a screw inside there. And the screw uh, uh, rotates, giving a lot of friction to the material. And actually, most of the energy to melt it comes from the friction between the screw and the material. So you don't actually have to heat it then? Uh, there uh -huh. is that 30% approximately comes from heating it, 70% comes from the resistance. Everybody thinks it's only heating, it isn't. Then you have what's called mass back, so that's a, a black dye. So that's pre-colored material, not master back. So that's actually pre-colored. Now this is all very capital intensive, all this equipment, man. Yeah. This is insane. When you think about the software, the, the maintenance of all this stuff, I mean, you're... Yeah. Your machine engineers must be really busy keeping all these things going. <laughs> well, our uh, inspection's upstairs. This is inspection of one thing and one thing only, and that is incoming materials. Ah. So you can see here, hey, down. What he's got here is, uh, that's a $35,000 X-ray machine. Wow. And what it does, he puts it on the material, pulls the trigger, and it tells him what it is. It tells you what the, uh, um, elemental composition of the material. Wow, that's insane. I yeah. didn't know they had that kind of technology. Now it says 303. But... So these are all golden samples that have come from the manufacturer. Uh -huh. And then this thing is a, uh, God, how much was that? I think about $25,000. For, for that? For that. <laughs> yeah, my God. And that is a big ass real diamond in there, pure. Uh. And it will tell you what plastic you've got with very high accuracy. Huh. So all of this is to do with operations. Quoting, project management, uh, logis uh, logistics, and scheduling engineering, uh, all the tool making guys. Ah, this is huge. <laughs> yeah. And then they said, oh crap, don't it, we've got no one in the factory, so. Mm. So this is our proper inspection department. Okay. We've got some beautiful equipment. So that's a coordinate measuring machine, a CMM. Uh -huh. uh, and it does very, very high precision measurement of, uh, you know, components. Uh, this one over here, does pretty much everything that doesn't do. So this is this measures shape. It measures sort of 3D organic shapes and it compares them to the original 3D CAD model. So it tells you what the range of inaccuracy is. So most of it's green, so it's plus or minus 0.1. Little bits of blue, well they're actually, that's okay because they're actually ejector pin marks, but that tells you they're about 0.2 out. But, but this is how we measure whether or not a shape uh, fits the 3D CAD model. That's that's what we're trying to do. So this is uh, basically what's called a blue white light scanner size. That that head alone is over a hundred thousand dollars. Thirty-five thousand dollars worth of software. Jeez. Um, Archie's been here the longest. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay, very cool. Maybe Twelve years. Ago. When did Star Rapid uh, uh, become a thing? When did it start? Yeah, 2005. Uh huh. And we took this factory in, we became a manufacturer in 2000, late 2008, 2009. Okay. 
So we've been we've been manufacturing our own stuff for about 12 years now. And have you seen steady growth, or has it just been kind of a uh, in manufacturing? I guess it depends on the order. So. Uh, it, to begin with, it was really really good growth. I mean, great growth. Uh, it was really you know the whole uh, anti Chinese tariffs and all that right. stuff that kind of put a damper on things. And but then things were getting a lot better towards the end of 2019, and then suddenly coronavirus kicked mm. in. And again, that put a bit of a dampener on it, but we're still growing. I mean, we it, we haven't stopped growing. But this year, I think for manufacturing, is going to be pretty good. People, I every, think so every, too. Everybody's going to be playing catch up. Yeah. This is our model shop. So the sanding and fitting and gluing, bonding, you know, all that kind mm. of stuff in here. So you can make pretty much anything in here, huh? Yep. Yeah. These guys are super skilled. I mean, we've got we got some fabulous people. Here. And they've been here a long time. I, I think of all the departments, we've probably got the longest serving people in this department and the painting department. Metal 3D printer. Yes. I didn't even know they had those. So this, this is going to put you out of business, huh? <laughs> uh, these metal printers are very slow. Very, very sophisticated parts. Hollow, organic shapes. These are teeth? Uh, these are implants for uh, mandibles, hip, wow. hip joint work. Look at that. And you can mass produce these items in this? It's, it's really low quantities. I mean, that, mm. that, see, look at this thing. It's completely hollow inside. It's got a, a kind of a, a mesh inside to make it stronger. It's titanium. Mm. Feel how light that is. I mean, that is so light. It's almost oh, like yeah. Baby hip implant there. This Baby mesh, hip implant. Uh, it's, it's, I call it. Oh, okay. What we call a miniature. Oh, okay, okay. So this is hollow. It's like a mesh, and the bone grows into that. Really gets a hold of it. Wow. We have like nearly two thousand molds. So these are just uh, inventory. You know, you just stick them on a, a bend because you might have to use parts or yeah, designs later. Yeah. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, there's Barry. <laughs> With Manny Pacquiao. There's him. That's Manny Pacquiao. Barry and Manny and his wife. His wife's quite an accomplished boxer. Wow, look so, at that. That is a four meter ring, so you're actually, you're actually working in about three meters. Uh, and the reason for that is because we do Krav Maga. Close quarter combat. We will have four men in that ring at the same time fighting. If you get in a bar fight, in a restaurant, right. on, a, on a subway, or wherever, you, you have constrained space. You don't have a lot of space to work in. Bat, knife, gun, defense. Because uh. the guy's not going to attack you like that. He walks up to you and he, yeah. like that. So the only response you've got is that. Every two years, you pick a new project and you go for it. They yeah, so every couple of years. So <clears throat> I did the NLP, got my crack, got my master crack, and I practiced it for years. I still do. Then I decided I wanted to do, I get a black belt in something and with Barry around, I thought, okay, Krav Maga would be really cool. Um, it's not something like when you think about martial arts, it, I had never actually heard of it till I met Barry a few weeks ago, you yeah. know? So you think judo, you think karate, you think kung fu, yeah. but Krav Maga, yeah, did so I say that right? <laughs> Krav. Krav yeah, Maga. Yeah. Okay. So Krav Maga is what they call a magpie system. So basically it is not its own system really, it, it's, it's, it's taken all the good bits, all the the practical functional bits from any other system. So it's all open-handed stuff, it's elbows, it's head butts, it's shoulders. So you, you, you use the bits that work for you. We have classes for the employees three times a week. Wow, so even the, all, even the line workers can have access to the gym and everything. Wow, that's great. We've got the taut green screen. We've got uh, these. The filters, the green the light filters. filters, yeah. So the beauty of that is that you can really lower down the light. I mean, almost no light on there, but what is going on there is all green. Yeah. So you don't get all that. Yeah, there's always a green tint when you use green screen, yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. LED lights here, and you can change the, the, the color. And what kind of videos do you produce in here? Serious engineering for serious engineers. That's the one you were telling me about, though. Yeah. <laughs> the kind of tongue-in-cheek one a little yeah. bit. Yeah, okay. Actually, we did our first live stream. Uh, I didn't do it, Chris did it. He's an American. Great studio, blacked out. Yeah. Dedicated space, good floor. Yeah. 
Gordon really is an amazing guy. He's an interesting guy to talk to. He's very approachable, very uh, personable, incredible stories and really good insight into the world. Special thanks to Gordon for allowing me to tour uh, his incredible factory here in Zhongshan.